I mean, uh, speaker. Her name is Sharon Kavuli. She was born in Stockholm, Sweden, where she lived for 10 years before moving to London, UK, with her family. She is the co-director of the Young Women's Speech UK, uh, WFWP UK flagship education program for young women. Her professional background as a change management consultant working in tech who has allowed her to serve both private and public sector organizations, including departments of the UK government. Sharon is currently pursuing a master's degree in urban uh, economic development at the University College of London and hopes to pursue a career in international development with a focus on African prosperity. Okay, so Sharon, the floor is yours. Share with us some pictures, so let's see first. I would like to add that I'm very impressed about what we've been hearing about these babies how prepared they are, all the studies and effort, and how committed they are to this planet and to their causes. They're giving their free time and heart to work for the planet for a better purpose. So, yeah, I'm really glad. Okay. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen esteemed leaders and distinguished guests. I want to first of all thank the WFWP leadership for inviting me onto this forum and giving me the honor to stand before you and present my speech or my talk for today. It is my joy to be able to share with you this power, um, to, to share with you and this powerful network of leaders and peace builders. My own experience and learnings I've been able to gather over the years my name is Sharon Kabubi, and I am a member of WFWP UK. For the past seven years, I have had the blessing of leading our flagship education program in the UK, known as the Young Women's Speech Contest. I first joined this program as a participant myself back in 2016. In fact, I was a biomed student at the time. Over the years, I have since come to really welcome the WFWP in my world, in the same way it has embraced and welcomed me. I've taken joy and satisfaction in the knowing that there is in fact a community of women leaders around the world selflessly coming together to not only bring peace into their communities, but also working tirelessly towards establishing peace, establishing peace as a brand in all the different spheres of the world that we all come from. Peace is usually an abstract concept for many, including myself sometimes. But I have come to realize more and more every day that peace is in fact a personal choice. So I want to firstly applaud all of us for walking this journey, no matter how it looks, how imperfect it may be, we're still here gathering and doing what we do now, uh, what we can. So if you don't mind clapping for all of you. So on to today's topic, creating a sustainable future, women's role in environmental peace building. When I think of the word sustainable, sustainability, I think of the future. I think of the future 50 years from now. I think 100 years from now. I think about what we right now as a humanity are doing, what I myself as an individual uh, am doing, so self-inquiry. How are we showing up for the earth? And for the earth that we claim to love, but sometimes tend to mistreat. When putting together this presentation, it was my priority to present with you uh, the utmost authenticity and to come from the heart. So, since 2015, the WFWP UK chapter has been running the Young Women's Speech Contest as our flagship education program. 
for young women in the UK. We offer young women aged 18 to 29 the opportunity to participate in a public speaking contest on a theme produced by the committee. The program is open to all young women across the UK, where after they have submitted their written pieces, they go through a selection process, including a telephone interview, before being selected for the live national finals. Um, that usually takes place in October every year. The theme ranges from uh, anywhere from women's issues, societal issues, to the environment. And the idea is to give women the initial platform that enables them the opportunity to practice and speak to their leadership. Usually, our young women have come from all walks of life, displaying courage, resilience, bravery, and sometimes powerful uh, vulnerability, offering so much wisdom through their unique stories and experiences. Our judges carefully select and vote on the winners through a number of criteria, and each year we offer the winners some cash prizes, but also the opportunity to take part in different speaking engagements throughout the year. The continued success and growth of this program over the years has, um, has led to the formation of a growing alumni network in the UK for our finalists. During this time, we have also been expanding to other countries, including WFWP Spain, Albania, and I think Australia as well. To add to this growth, this year we took a massive leap and designed and piloted our first internship program for post-program development. The internship offers a three-month container of solid work experience for those ladies who take further interest in the WFWP and wish to work closely with our chapter. We find that this has come to be a way of formally introducing and welcoming more young people into the chapter whilst also fulfilling their needs and ambitions to work with like-minded women. So in the winter of 2021, I had the idea of expanding and launching this very platform to Africa. More specifically, my home country of Uganda, where both my parents come from. The inspiration became true and was supported with the collaboration of the WF chapter in Uganda and various other partners in the UK. We continued with the 2022 theme of that year in the UK, which was Mother Earth connect, protect, and care. So August 22 came, and we had received 58 applications. We qualified 12 finalists for the live finals, and had 12 young women perform and deliver their unique experiences and stories at Fairware Hotel in Kampala, Uganda. <coughs> Our distinguished guests ranged on the day, including MPs from regional districts, MPs of Environment, Natural Resources, and Climate Change. We had a founder and CEO of One Million Trees, which is um, a gentleman whose name has left my brain. Um, <laughs> but he's running one of the largest environmental campaigns across Uganda. He's also one of the found, and we also had founding members of the National Environment Management Authority, uh, Neymar, as well as the keynote address. So these are some of the, the members and the keynotes. Uh, and, a, and um, a keynote address from Uganda's, one of Uganda's most prominent environmental activists, Mr. Kenneth Tumusime. According to the Uganda Bureau of Statistics 2022, Uganda interesting, interestingly has one of the youngest populations in the world, with 78% of the population aged under, under uh, 30. And yet, a growing 9.3 million of this population is facing unemployment post higher education. Yeah. To make matters even more so interesting, Uganda was actually ranked the most entrepreneurial country in the world by the Global Entrepreneurship Monitor in 2016. But yet, if you look at the country's GDP, this does not count for much. According to entrepreneurship researchers, although the country's citizens are deemed entrepreneurial, they found that it is not necessarily an entrepreneurship born out of necessity or opportunity, sorry, it's not entrepreneurship born out of opportunity and innovation, uh, that citizens are deemed entrepreneurial, but in fact, entrepreneurship deemed uh, born out of necessity, i.e. survival. 
if you want to see the next day, you better sell something. So that is imminent for me as a young person that our future leaders become emboldened enough to lead us to new heights. It was very important for me to have this program reach Uganda. Um, to reach Uganda, I wanted to provide young women in Uganda with the equal opportunity to voice their values and beliefs and thoughts through this platform. I knew that their unique experiences of the environment and the climate crisis in Uganda were worthy of being told and heard. I was not only proud but humbled at the sheer wisdom and resilience of our young people and the wisdom that they imparted on the audience on topics such as waste disposal systems in schools, at home, agricultural innovation, soil erosion, deforestation, plastic pollution, and so on. So this expansion gave me hope that we have to indeed keep fighting for our young people, and fighting for their rights. Um, we have to keep fighting for and preserving the rights of the youth uh, that want to fight and advocate for their communities and the liberation of their social, economic, and political rights. I became, I became convinced that if we truly want an empowered future, we cannot get there without the voice of the youth. They are voicing the needs of the future, and as a member of the diaspora, I feel it is my responsibility to work alongside my African sisters to build for the future. As such, collaborating with grassroots networks, the many change agents and NGOs on ground becomes key. So during a three-month internship last year with the W International Office in Geneva last year, I learned about the United Nations Declaration on the Right to Development, which was established in 1986. The Right to Development introduced a concept that recognizes that development is a fundamental right of all individuals and communities, encompassing not only economic progress, but also social, cultural and political advancement. This right stood out to me of all the rights because it recognizes that development is an essential prerequisite. It provided a comprehensive framework for understanding and promoting development as a right, stating that every person and all people have the right to participate, contribute to and enjoy economic, social and cultural political development. Development today takes shape in all forms, and as a student of development, I'm keen to understand the interplay between people, economics, trade, and environment. How does development affect the well-being of a society? How does development incorporate environmental well-being? What would it look like when the world has achieved optimum development, if there is such a thing? What does the pinnacle of a modern, civilized, and peaceful society look like when all are equal. I have zero minutes, but a few pages left. <laughs> <laughs> Along the way, and in my studies, it has become clearer and clearer that we cannot achieve equality, true equity, and transformation that is just without considering and researching the impact of sustainability. As a fundamental framework and a model from which to springboard all our work and efforts, if we do not do this, we simply cannot achieve this goal of development. But this also introduces a whole heap of other questions, challenges, i.e., who is to govern the potential new systems of sustainability? Who is responsible on, for making sure that all of these goals are achieved? And who does what? And it is a fact that not everybody is concerned with sustainability. Not everybody pursues this as a top agenda. Today, the UN defines sustainability as meeting the needs of the present without compromising the ability of future generations to meet their own needs. I like this definition because for me, it puts the onus on me, on us as a generation, to take it upon ourselves to be conscious, to consciously think about what it means to be a human being living today. How do my actions today determine the abilities resources and quality of life of my future children and the people of the future. There is uh, the recognition that we have to look after those coming after us, even those whom we are likely to never meet long after we've been. It means laying forward successive responsibility 
and a framework of victory for future generations to learn from and exemplify. One of my favorite transformation teachers says that everything in life is relationships. I've heard her say this many times, but it took me a while until recently to really appreciate this. Everything in life is truly relationships. Whether this is relationships with our families, friends, loved ones, pets, bosses, neighbors, it also includes our relationship to the less tangible things, such as money, time, our mental <coughs> health, peace, and environment. I think about, so in the sense of the environment, our mother earth and sustainable peace, I think about the relationships we have to our dear planet. How do we identify with, the, with our environment, be that nature, the city you live in, the wild animals in your local forest, Perhaps there is a level of indifference or a feeling of unconnectedness, which is fine because everybody's on their own journey. <laughs> but maybe you're on the other end of the spectrum where you feel a deep passion and love for this planet. But I say this to highlight, if we truly want to tackle the challenge of the environment, it is my understanding that it is in fact crucial we first investigate our personal relationship to the planet. They say, if you don't know where you come from, you won't know where you're going. Sometimes being human with our human problems and desires, we also forget that we are also mere mammals who rely on the planet. We too are nature. All this to say, how can we talk about sustainability without talking about our own personal relationships to sustainability and peace? Perhaps it is in our best interest to investigate uh, how we identify with peace. And I believe from there we shall be inspired from within to lead with our hearts and inspire the same leadership in others. On a global front, I cannot of course neglect the facts. As a Ugandan, I am particularly interested in the continent. Most African countries contribute less than 2% of global carbon emissions, yet have been predicted to be worst hit by the crisis. The UN SDG declaration set the goal for all countries to achieve net zero by 2050. However, if you look at world statistics, they are showing that we are in fact still growing global carbon emission by 2% every year till today. So looking at these systems, I think about the systems and our Western culture of consumerism. I look at globalism and its impact. Uh, this global vision. Interesting, but the, the program has to go on. So, Kitty, right? Because she's really interesting what you share with us. Thanks a lot for your work on the UK. They are very, very lucky to have you there. So, yeah.
Okay, so we 